think of, thinking about this man called Jesus. Jesus. Yes. And how wonderful he is. Yes. How great and mighty he is. And you all will sit with me just for a second. I love the new songs. But I'm a bit of still a little old school. And I sing songs like, I love Jesus. He is my Savior. When the storms are raging, He is my shelter. When He needs me, I love I Sing it with me. I love Jesus. And He loves me. Oh, I love Jesus. Thank you. 
verse 19. The scripture says, And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Verse 20 then says, And they straightway left their nets and followed him. I'm jumping down to 23 and it says, Jesus, what I just read, that was the fishing trip. That was the true fishing trip. 23 says, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Another translation said he healed them all. Turn to somebody and say he healed them all. He healed them all. 24 says, and his fame. Check this out. This is the reeling in now. That was the bait. What I just read in 23. 24 says, and his fame went throughout all Syria. And they came and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments. And those which were possessed with the with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy. And he healed them. Say it again. And he healed them. 25 last he says, and there followed him a great multitude of people from Galilee. This is the catch. And from the capitalists. Him and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond the Jordan. If I had a subject, you can take your seats. It is, I was that fish. Two important words that the scripture starts off and tells us was, follow me. That meant they were going somewhere. That meant they were moving like evangelists just got done saying. They were headed to a destination. When we get to these things and when the disciples were looking at it, what Jesus was trying to show them at that particular moment, everything was for a reason. And what he was trying to show them at that particular moment is that you have to move as disciples. And we are his disciples. We are his followers. We are his children. Like she said, we are the body of Christ. And we have to move. When we are going about, like she said earlier, doing the will of God, we have to move. We have to go where the fish are. I've never heard a fishing story start off by saying that me and my fishermen were in a hut and we sat there with our poles and said, here, fishy, fishy, fishy. And then the fish jumped out the water, flopped to the hut, and then jumped on the hook. I've never heard that story. But what happens is when you are a fisherman, Sister Carla says she likes to fish, you go to the pond. You go to where the fish are. You go to the lake. You go to the places that sometimes don't seem that desirable. I'm sure when Jesus was walking and he was taking those disciples different places, it was places that they were not necessarily familiar with. They may have been doing anything in these areas, in the dark alleys, in the places, and they're doing all kinds of things, but they went to where the fish were in order to catch the fish. We can't just sit in our houses and sit in our churches and sit in our places and expect the fish to just jump out and flop into the pew. It doesn't always work like that. We have to get up and we have to move and go to where the fish are. They, G, G, the scripture said Jesus went to their synagogues. Once again, he went to where they were and he was teaching them. And he was preaching and he was telling them about this good news, this gospel, and this place called heaven. He was telling them all the things that they even needed to do to get there, who God was, how good he was, what he's able to do for you, if you can just make it there. He was sharing the good news with the people, and he was giving them what it was that they needed so that they could be knowledgeable to know about the Lord. Another important word that I took notice to was healing. The second thing that he was showing his disciples was compassion. He was showing them that while he was healing, he was showing compassion. And like I said, that other translation, it was saying that they were coming to him with all kinds, hundreds and hundreds, if you can imagine, all kinds of sicknesses and illnesses and disease and demons and craziness. But he took his time to heal them all. He took his time to show that compassion. He took his time to help them. He didn't have to. He could have kept right on trucking, and he could have kept preaching, and he could have kept teaching, and showing his disciples that portion of the lesson. But he took his time to show that compassion. 
and you have some time to pull something out of you in order to show true compassion, true love for one another. And if the Bible doesn't talk anymore about anything, it is about love and teaching us and telling us the importance of showing love and what that means. And sometimes when we say things like that, the church get upset because they say when you're showing love, that means you're trying to compromise and you're trying to this. You can hold on to your standard. You can hold on to holiness and still show love. Please don't think that it means you have to compromise. And it's not an excuse for us not to go out because sometimes we use it as an excuse. But we're going to stand here and we're on the wall and we're going to stand on our standards. You can do that and still show love to someone that needs it. Show that compassion to someone whose heart is broken or someone that just needs someone to say, God loves you and so do I. You're not alone in this situation. You're not by yourself. So it is important when we go through to show love, show that compassion and why he was showing that compassion. Like I said earlier, he was teaching and he was preaching. He was telling them who God is and what he can do, like I said earlier, and what he expects from us. Another thing that we need to keep in mind is that when we are fishing, we are not fishing for the kill. We are not fishing to destroy what we catch. And we cannot allow our words or the word of God to kill what we are trying to catch, what we, what we are trying, who we're trying to minister to. So we have to be very careful. And we have to use the wisdom of God to teach us when to speak and when to shut up, when to go and when to sit down, when to make sure you're being sent to where you're going. God gives us that wisdom. And he shows us what it is that we need to do and where it is that we need to go, who we need to talk to, who needs us right in that moment, who is con contemplating suicide. And when you send that text message or when you make that phone call or when you see him in the store right in that moment, God gives us that wisdom and that deserve to know just when to go and just what to say when we get there. So we always have to be mindful that we are not fishing for the kill. It is to bring them back into safety. It is to give them greater and help them have a more valuable life in Christ. To bring them and keep them in a safe place. And that is what we are fishing for. You know, I was thinking about, and I'm about to close out because y'all done preached up something in here. But you know, I was thinking about a story. And the story was talking about a fisherman. And the fisherman had a particular fish, you know, sometimes... My husband and I watch a lot of National Geographic and things like that, and sometimes they do things like tracking animals or the animals in the wild, and they track them or pay attention to migrations and things like that so they can know what the populations look like in different places. And the story was that a fisherman was familiar with a particular freshwater fish. You all follow me. And he was familiar with this particular freshwater fish. And one day, that freshwater fish had drifted off into some salt water. Now, if you know anything about fish, they got to stay in their own climate. If they don't, they will die. So that fish had drifted off into that salt water. Now, the fisherman was aware that the fish had drifted off into that salt water. So he just kind of kept an eye on the fish. He knew that the fish didn't need to be there and it didn't need to go there. So he kind of kept an eye on it just to see what was going to happen, just to see what, what it was going to do, and then give it some time and opportunity to come back into the fresh water where it belonged. The front where the area was where the fish was starting to get a little rocky. The storm started blowing, the water got a little rough, and that fresh that fisherman he got even more worried and more concerned because he knew that that fish, thank you, Jesus, would not survive if he stayed out into that water. So one day, when the fisherman decided enough was enough, he went out into that water and he went and got that one fish that he knew if I don't rescue him. He is going to drown. I was that fish. One day when I was sinking deep in sin, God came and he rescued me. And this is why it is important for us to do the work of being effective fishermen. Because when we do it effectively, thank you, Jesus, you don't know who you are saving. You don't know whose life is dependent upon your word. You don't know whose life is dependent upon you getting out of your comfort zone and going to find them. Going to the waters where you already know you don't want to go. You don't know whose life is dependent on it. And I'm grateful for that fishing expedition that day when God came and he rescued me. 
And sometimes it doesn't always have to look like what we think it should look like. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it can come in a form, like I said earlier, just an encouraging word. Yeah. Treating someone to dinner because the thing about it is that we have Christ within us. If we truly are saved and sanctified and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, no matter what we do, where we're at, what kind of arena we're in, Christ is going to come out some way. Right. It's going to come out in the conversation. Right. It's going to come out in the way you walk. That's it's going to come out in the way you talk. So if you are around that fish, if you are around those lost souls, they are going to see Christ. Yes. And they're going to see the love of God because it should be exuding off of you. Yes. 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 So it doesn't matter what you do sometimes. It doesn't have to be overly thought out when we sit there and say, well, I don't have this or I don't have the proper pamphlets. If you got Jesus, yes. that's enough. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And that is enough for you to go on a successful fishing trip. Yes. That's enough for you to successfully go out there and know what to say and do to go ahead and capture those fish. And if you ever think that it might be a little too much for you, or I don't want to, or I don't feel like it. Just remember that one day you yeah. were that fish. Yeah. And it may not look the same as another fish, but you were still that yeah. fish. Yeah. And God got up and he yeah. came to pull you out of that water and rescue you. And I'm grateful to God. We have to make sure. Time is winding up. We don't have a lot of time left to go fishing. And we are going to have to give an account to what we do and what we have done with our time. And when God looks at you and say, where's your net? Is it going to be empty or is it going to be full? Is it going to be busted loose or is it going to be skipped? Are you going to tell God I was too tired? I didn't feel like it. I didn't want to drive through that neighborhood. I didn't want to talk to them. Or are we going to say, is God going to say, well done. My good and faithful servant. Servant means that you work. You're moving. You're doing. You're not just sitting down waiting for something to come to you. Sitting down waiting for that lost soul to pass by your feet. We have to go to them. Yes. And they might be right in the church with us. Yes, 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 it yes. might be your brother and sister. It might be your mama, your daddy, your stepbrother. But we have to make sure yes. that we take the time yes. for the fish. Yes. We have to make sure that we take the time to show that love. Yes, God. And when we show that love, the Lord is going to show us the words to teach the word of God. It's going to come out. Yes. And we'll be able to tell them that you have to repent yes. and be baptized in the name of Jesus yes. for the remission of your yes. sins. So that ye shall, it's a promise, receive the precious yeah. gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But if we never go to them, we can't tell them. We can't give them that good news if we never get out of our huts and move. Hallelujah. Remember, I was that fish. Yes. Yes. 